proper type. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Harold Johnson, Lord Mayor of Black Lion. No. Oh, yeah, okay, that'll be on the cover now. So, Harold, you, you were telling us uh, uh, something of the local history of Old Kalina Graveyard. That's right. Uh, you were saying something about the numbers of people. There was, oh. we reckon there's between 12 and 15,000. Because there was only graveyard for miles around. Even people from Glan came down and were buried in it at one right. stage or another. Is Glan, Glan, Glan Gelbin? Glan Gelbin up above in the mountain, yeah. you know. Yeah, okay. And uh, the, it... Uh, just one of the door though, an old family plot maybe you yeah. see the middle family middle originally yeah. lived there and they'd go back to the old family plot. Yeah. Because there's the old tradition for them all to be buried in, in the one graveyard. In the one graveyard. And, and you were going to tell us there about the Nixon Oh I, Major Nixon's vault is inside in the yeah. in, in, in the in, in the graveyard. In the church. Uh, and inside the church yeah. there. And it uh, when he died, the old major now not the present not the major that was in Beltry, but the, his father yes. in the 1920s. He was buried there in the 1920s. There was a rumour went out that he was buried with a, a very valuable ring on him. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. And these boats went up and opened the vault and took the coffin out and opened it outside. But they ran off and left it. Do you know? And one of the Thomas Fraser or Fraser, some of the Frasers, Archie Fraser, some of them was about and he contacted Nitsons and they sent the men over and they closed the draft and up and put it back in again. Do you know? Yeah. The rumour was that he'd yeah. been wearing this. Yeah. But he hadn't. Yeah. He, you you know? he wasn't in a lead coffin or anything, was he? No. Why? That's, you haven't heard that? No. no. Well, they probably used lead coffins. Yeah. There is a big lead coffin in that graveyard. You didn't find it? No. No. It's an American uh, soldier that's buried in it. Is there? Right. Right. We've seen a few headstones with links to Kansas City. Uh, they were they're cut by the Dennings from Manor Hamilton, but right. it looks like they were paid with, with money from Kansas. Well, so that's, listen, that's what happened. Yeah. People came home. Yeah. And they paid for the people yeah. couldn't afford to do them. Yeah. And we had no cash here. No, they yeah. paid for the uh, yeah. for the putting up the headstones. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, you can't remember the name of the American soldier, can you? Uh, he left, he left the bars. I'll tell you the story of him. I think, oh gee, I'd have to look up. Okay, some, okay. Some but he left up there about 1912. Right. And he went over to New York. Yeah. And then the transcription came in about 1917. Right. And of course he was the age to be into the army. Yeah. And he came over to France and he was shot at one of the big battles. Right, right. And he was buried temporarily there. Yeah. In fact, I'm just having it here either. They're doing it, I think, on us at the minute. Yeah. Uh, they're paying for, they're restoring them all. And he came, the man told me, he he came in a big oak box. Yeah. With a trough in it. Right, right. Do you know? Yeah. And to Veltry Railway Station accompanied by an American soldier right and he would have walked in front of the trap or whatever brought it up to the house and that awake above in the house in 1922 right 23 right they were bringing them all home the the ones in New York paid yes for any Irish soldier that was killed right brought them home to be right. paid in the local and graveyard he's buried and lane. he's buried up there in a lead lane coffin yeah because uh, this man that I was talking about they're doing a book on them there were 67 of them all together right of these coffins, yeah, and they were lead lined, and he even left a picture of the boat being with me here. I don't right. know, it must be out in the house, right? Of them unloading them in 1922, maybe even 23, I just can't remember the exact date, yeah, at the docks in Dublin, right. lifting them out for them to be dispatched around the different areas right. of the country. All right, and they came in one batch, and, yeah. and they came in the one batch, okay. So, I know he told me that he was down, he dropped, he said, There's only one in Cavan, there was this man here. There was a couple in Leitrim that he had to locate and they'd run to put up a headstone on the wall. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be so, a new headstone, so... So he'd be coming down with, I don't know, this army that's doing it or someone's doing it. With yeah. A, and they'd have detected in a couple of minutes because he's a big lead coffin. Oh yeah, oh the, yeah. The I, oh yeah, I'd be surprised if that works. <laughs> I've well, tried that and uh, I'm not sure it works. <laughs> well, I think they, this is a fairly... Yeah, yeah. Uh, as highly that's highly interesting, guys. Right? She's no trouble finding it at all because she's all a lead coffin. Yeah.
Well, if, if we have the name, maybe we can match it with our record, so and we uh, might be able to help out. Is he? Oh, I think it's you, I think, does he? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's what you're uh, doing. He'd, he'd, he'd be with you. Harold, somebody else told me you have a story about rabbits. Uh, oh, oh I. Would, would you tell that? Just, but we'll just tell you the story about them with you. Okay, he told me a man. A man was uh, telling me he was down in Tyrone and he went to this area and he says uh, they wanted to know the soldier that was killed in the war. Was he any? He went to this, the people that were there. Oh, says the fellow. He says, sure, that's my grand uncle you're talking about. I well, said, so you know all about it. And that's right, he says, we have come into the kitchen, he says. And here in the kitchen, he says, this is in his memory. was a big oak dresser. Right. And the coffin had come in these big oak containers. Yeah. And they made a dresser out of it. <laughs> in, in the kitchen. Brilliant. That was around the coffin, you see, and the coffin, of course, was buried. And he says, they still had the flag, the American flag there. Great, great. And they had his medals. Yeah. And they had all the bits and pieces. Yeah. That'd be great to photograph the dresser even. That you know? he had, uh, yeah, you know. If it's still there. It's down at Tyrone, so he's coming back out here, you know. Yeah. And he says, if there's anybody interested in it, he'll do a talk on the whole yeah. thing, you know. Super, super. So I don't I haven't seen him this while, you know. Yeah. He left the photographs there of the boat and that sort of thing, you yeah. know. But uh, yeah. I know he'd have moved up to the bars and there's a walk down to the graveyard and the American flag and Works. And, all, and then forgot about. Yeah, forgot about. Yes, forgotten about. Yeah, uh, he's being remembered now. Pardon? Uh, he's being remembered now. How about? Oh, the well they're doing a boot on it. Oh yeah, yeah. They're doing a boot on it. Yeah. This is what that's he's good, doing. So. They're doing a boot on the whole sixty-seven of them. Yeah. That's good because there's a couple of them all over the country. There. Yeah. They're still working at it. Yeah. They thought they should have it finished. I have a great grandfather you know? buried. He died in the Sam, sixteenth of July, um, in the Royal Irish Regiment. Aye. But we didn't know about him until. Ten years ago. I know, I know. Well, you can get the whole records now for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we've got him since. Yeah, we know where he was. Aye, aye, yeah. aye. But he was a regular in the army. He was, uh, he was a soldier before the war. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So yeah. We had an uncle killed in the war too. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, oh, the f- uh, 1918. Yeah. He lasted till March 1918. Right. <laughs> and that's finished yeah. a couple of months later. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, that's mm. a tough one. And uh, my grandmother. Uh, knew he was dead before she came down in the shop in the morning she says I'm afraid James has been killed in the war and they said ah don't be silly and she went in the morning straight away yeah oh she says I heard him I heard him calling me this morning she says and I missed him into the room she yeah. says yeah and I knew he was gone yeah yeah lovely but then that was all right uh, uh, what had happened was the Germans had overrun the, the trenches right and he'd been killed, and there was another friend of his that came from Letterbreen. He was brought a prisoner and back, and he had a work in Germany. Right. Back on the farms. Yeah, yeah. Brought back as a prisoner. Yeah. And he wasn't released till 1919. Yeah. When they did the armistice <laughs> and all yeah, that, yeah. they did the whole exchanges. Yeah. So anyway, he came back here, and he came up to me, me grandmother here, and he told her the whole story. That when he was dying, he was calling for you. Right. That stage was weird, Brief, absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. weird. I've heard, you know, I've heard similar stories now I, I, down I, in County Cork. That's what somebody says. I, yeah. that it was a common enough yeah. occurrence. A bang, a you bang know. upstairs, and and the mother would say I, something I. has happened. And but she went in the morning and came down here, and the girls was here at the time and says to her, "Don't be telling people that. You don't know. Yeah. I do know he's dead. Yeah. She in the morning yeah. straight away. Yeah, yeah. They heard in a fortnight later that he was missing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have the old. She went out to France when they're putting the new headstones up for yeah, them. Yeah, they were being moved, you yeah. see, from the temporary yeah. burial. Yeah. And she went out and she brought the old uh, cross wooden bank. cross back. Did she? Uh, right. With right. her. So uh, there's a project now, Harold, where they're recording all them. Mm, there's a, a bunch of lads across in England. Uh, they're they're uh, taking all those uh, photographs. Uh, it's a sad story. Yeah. So uh, the grand their father died then that we my grandfather died about a year afterwards he never yeah. over the shot that yeah. the club been killed yeah. you know he was only yeah. 18 or 19 yeah yeah too young uh, it's pardon yeah aye yeah. so uh, the you seen the Madorn there's a good Madorn crest there yeah of the Madorn yeah the chiefs of Madorn yeah that's what I'm sure yeah <laughs> and then the one inside the door inside the gate that's turned yeah. upside down yeah yeah, what's that story? M- but man, well, if you turn it up to the other side, that uh, 
you'll see Terence McManus, erected by his, his wife Ruth Nixon. Okay. Do you see? Okay. Is she one of the Nixons? <laughs> she, they lived, the Nixons lived in the bars at the time. Right. I don't know. Well, she, she wouldn't be connected to the major Nixons, yes. it'd be the other Nixons. Okay. And where's the bars now? I don't it's know. It's up in Growlin, up in the mountain. Is it a townland? It is. It's a big area up there that all of the bars. It's the high ground over, over Black Lane. Okay. Course. Further up than Money area. Ah, that's Money area. That's the bars, all call that the bars up right. there. Right, okay. Dirtfield and Bordeen and all them. Okay, this and, and Terence married the Nixon girl. He must have, and she had this in, do you see, about to be loving wife, Ruth Nixon, do you see? And some of the Frasers used to say, oh, that's the headstone, the stair, but the family didn't want it put on the grave. And the stonemason delivered it to the grave, and he got paid. Yeah, to the yeah. side, and it was just left inside the inside, door. It's inside and the it's door. only when Father Layden and the Foss fellas was doing that in Dedson, they got two clean and he turned it up and here it was just clear. Yeah. yeah. If you want a headstone to last, yeah, turn bury it, it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. Uh, it was a wonderful clear headstone. So they, See, they, obviously it was a mixed marriage. Yeah. And the family wouldn't didn't want this headstone put up. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, I do, yeah. And uh, obviously there's that, but as to... And can I ask, where would the grave be? There's no... Well, we don't know, you see. It's not, it's not where the stone no, is. No, no. They just left... The stone mason just left it inside the gate. Yeah. It must be one of the McManus graves. Of course it is. So they're all the one. They didn't want Ruth Nixon's name up no, in there. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so if she'd kept her name off it, it, it could have gone up. It probably could have. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Love and wife. Yeah, it's funny, yeah, really. She's not allowed to say it's that. Nineteen thirty-two or eighteen thirty-two. Eighteen thirty-two. Eighteen thirty-two. Oh, yeah, that's good. See, a lot of those headstones, they were made up in the bars. Yeah. It's family the name of Kyles. Yeah, yeah. Kyles were the stonemasons. Yeah, yeah. And they used to cut them up the back, on the rock. Yeah. They are somewhere about there, at least yeah. the suitable rock. Okay. But there were stone masons. They built the Slido Leitrim, they built the railway station in Beltru, okay. and then Linfarn. They were master stone masons. Yeah. Okay. You know, they're real That's top notch. Yeah. 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 And they used to do headstones yeah. up there. Yeah. Because That's fantastic. Somebody found a few old bits of old headstones up there that were broken. Yeah. Didn't and they're probably still there, aren't they? I wouldn't. It's said they're so gone. You, brought them in. Flipping, you wouldn't know what happened. <laughs> I, I find them some places still. Pardon? I still I'll find uh, them some places still. Uh, they, we, uh, we might get lucky. That's great now that you're connecting to the coils because there's coils. There's a lo lovely big flat slab on the ground. Mm. An early one mm. cut by the coils oh themselves. Aye. Oh, and aye. beautifully done. Oh, I should have a master, Mrs. Yeah. The earliest stone we had there is 1744. 1744. Is that right, yeah. So we've two at 1744. Uh, who, was, who were there? Oh, yeah. And who were there? We don't know. No could name? Be, could be Odo. It's O.D. Yeah, they're giving a beat. Well, oh, that's old Dolans. Yeah. These old Dolans are all very yeah. upper class, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, like. <laughs> yeah. They had a rampant line on it, so there was a sort of a coat of arms on it as well. Very oh, early now, but oh, very uh, brand new. It wasn't mm. in Father, it wm. wasn't in Father Laden survey. So it's a new one. No oh, wonder how did they miss that? Yeah, it was Jim, Jim Nolan pulled at it and found it, mm, um, mm, and mm. she was a great discovery. Yeah. Mm. That's a great story. That's and the, just the grave stone, the grave marker we found in front of the 1744 ones with all the pick yeah. marks on it. Yeah. Aye, but you the see, the reason why that had been done in the 1744s, and before Kyle's time, uh, the, they were doing this road here from yeah. Frontstort. And they were doing bridges there at the Marble Arch Glen, 1770s on that humpback bridge. Yeah. And there was a pile of stone masons working on this road for that. Brilliant. And they'd been living around the area. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they used to do this yeah. for people that had money. Yeah. They'd do a headstone for them. Yeah. That was how that started. Yeah. That's why 1740s had an that interesting date. That pick, pick on the ground. No, he, uh, Harold doesn't know about that. But oh, right. the context you're giving us—that's exactly that's exactly what I thought. But mm. you were after uh, mm. uh, giving us the um, mm. the the dates now and I know. why. Aye, aye, right, that's brilliant. Aye, aye. So uh, you have the same in old Chalesher out there. Yeah, you have. Uh, there's none of the skull and crossbones headstones no. out there at all. No, but the real old ones is the skull and crossbones on them. Yeah. Yeah. People have said it was a pirate strafe, but it's not. No, no. Memento Mori. There was the lion on the one, or... On the OD one. one the OD one yeah. we found today. And then mm. there's two of the winged heads on, uh, 
was it Joan O'Hara or no, hmm. Joan McHugh? Hmm. Yeah, that was a beautifully carved one. Hmm. So you want to hear about the rabbits? So? Ra- yeah, Francie <laughs> said to ask about the rabbits. <laughs> well, you see, round the war years and round that time, rabbits were a big price in the north. Yeah. They went up to three and six and they went five shillings. And that was a fetting fortune. Yeah. You know, in the late 40s, when a man was only getting a pound a day, a pound yeah. a week, <laughs> yeah. you know, or less. Uh, and a lot of boys used to go out at night Rampin, lampin rabbits, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a lot of rabbits down round home and round there and round the fields round there and yeah. There's plenty of ones used to go out at night. And there were these fellas went down to the graveyard and there was one of the walls there. I think it must have collapsed since. And uh, there was a you just stick your hand in, and there was all those rabbits. It was great place for getting rabbits. Yeah. So these boys had got a couple of rabbits out of it and, uh, and they were sitting and they seen these other fellas coming with two lights and they said, oh, that's me carried it and somebody else. Was it Philip Dolan? Some of them up there was coming with the lamps, you see. Yeah. So they went over to the... to the. <laughs> they went and hid, of course. The other side of the, the other wall. The other side of the wall, of yeah. course. And of course they came over with the lamps, you see, and your man put his hand in, you see, to feed with a rabbit and your man shook hands with the other <laughs> side. <laughs> Well, he nearly died of a heart attack. <laughs> he scared the life out of them, <laughs> do you know? <laughs> so th- that was the story of the rabbits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He didn't stay long. But another thing that happened there too, they used, uh, they used to tell this story. Now, I don't know why I'd say. You've probably heard it before at other places. But it was supposed to happen up there too. And I could see it happen. There was a fella, there was a fair day on in Black Lion, and this man went home as drunk as could be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he went down the avenue to the scene and he had to cross the railway. I don't know how he managed. I know. But so I know he went on down and he thought he was up on the avenue to his own house. And he remembered one by the gable of the church. He thought it was his house. And then he went and he opened the gate and he went into the graveyard. And he vaguely, he was as drunk as could be on potkin or something. And he was wandering around he couldn't get out of the graveyard and he fell down and fell asleep. Yeah. 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 So Archie Fraser. Oh, he's dead a long time now. Was down early in the morning looking at cattle and he seen the bundle of clothes over in the graveyard and he thought, Oh, that's strange. So he went over and uh, and he seen the boy there sound asleep and he your man was just waiting up and he looked up and he says, Oh God, Archie Fraser, I'm a mad lad to see you. He says, I thought I had died and that I was the first one up. <laughs> I was the first one up, he said. <laughs> and he was still drunk. So Archie said, oh, you're all right, you're all right, you're alive. Come on up with me. And he brought him up and he gave him tea and sobered him up and put him on the road to the land. Yeah. You've got to feed a bit of Archie about the fair somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Well, that was the way it was told to me. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, nice. I heard uh, other stories, you see, about it, you know? Yeah. My mother used to tell a great story about a graveyard up in, near where she lived in Trelawney, in Slidrow. Yeah. And this fellow would be going home from the fair and he'd come along, oh, drink must have put him mad, you know, one of those. Yeah. And he'd run by the graveyard, he'd stop and he'd look up and he'd shout, he says, Oh, Jimmy so and so, you're lying up there, he says, and you never paid me the ten shillings I loaned you. <laughs> <laughs> I never got it back. <laughs> yes, so and so, and you're lying there. Oh, he could have been and yeah. he'd only think about that when he was drunk. Yeah, and the, the house is round there. Oh, Jesus, there's your man coming home again and he's <laughs> shouting at the graveyard. <laughs> so two fellas had a plan. They heard him coming this night and they went and they hid down in the graveyard. Do you see? And he came along and he'd done the same thing. He shouted up at them and he says, Ah, oh, you're lying there and you never paid me back the tension, you old so and so. And one of them says, I never borrowed attention off you at all. Do you know? I never got the loan of it. And he took off running, he turned white and he ran into a neighbour's house up there. I'm after seeing a ghost up over the graveyard. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he was starting to. Yeah, yeah. He says, that quit it. It yeah, finished. Yeah, it yeah. finished. The <laughs> shirt. He doubted his facts after that. Doubted his facts. And that's Kalani, is it? That's, that's uh, the Sligo uh, story. Kalani, uh, yeah. uh, well, uh, uh, well, she lived in Kalani, I'd say Kalani. What was her surname? She was Barbara. Barbara, right. Uh, very good. Uh, some old graveyard along there. Yeah. Somewhere, she said. 